Am I lonely because I've been told so unremittingly that I cannot possibly be enough? Not with this fat, the expansive pale skin folding in on itself. Not with this limp, how dare I show pain that others do not accept. I have the depths to experience. Certainly not with this face, half paralyzed and finally showing some wrinkles. Living in this world, so consumed with judging such irrelevant things, I kept forgetting what beauty meant to me until I could find it inside the warm glow of my own loving. So late at night, it has become the morning, drenched in silence and starlight. This is beautiful. This is love from the marrow to the skin and as far past as imagination carries me. As trash and dishes surround me, I claim my vengeance against all the abuse and rejection and poverty. I'm here inside this heartbeat in love with living. All the cruelty irrelevant for I am here, seated in my bliss. All of you, everyone right now, you are perfect in your absence. As grateful as I am for the kindness in those last messages carried by ones and zeros that recently ceased, I am besotted with the bliss inside this poem. The boundaries of this house have held my voice for years now, all alone, echoing through with the random curses and so much art. These windows have quaked with my laughter. I was always loud, explosive in delight. Always I had these moments when uncouth messy, round, and small, I remembered to be whole, only for a breath or two. It took practice decades of it, to be honest. My brain was not meant for meditation in silence. It took so much creating to achieve five minutes of Zen, until it didn't anymore. If I were to go through the thousands of pages I wrote on my way, I might be able to find that exact moment, the night in today, when I changed. But most likely, it was unphenomenal. It was just giving thanks for surviving. It took years for me to admit that my foundation had really changed and that it was solid and serviceable. Laughing even now, this house in foreclosure. So many attempts at getting help turned down, doctor after doctor dismissing me, saying there's no pain in this body. And I am still here. And still, like then, I feel like this amount of suffering is enough, you know, honest. We could save the house or sell a book or have fortune change in some way. It might not destroy the Zen. <laughs> but also I know that everything I ever wanted before has been lost to me. Relationships, friendships, family, degree, prestige, acceptability. I do not even have a spiritual path to cling to any longer because I know it's all headcanon in the end. This moment of glory brought to you by this body, 1970 to 2.30 a.m. 16 October 2022, and all the places where I've been. These words pour from me because of so many hours of practice with language and keyboards and holding my thoughts together as best I can while I am in such agony. I know I'm a fool, demanding, and <laughs> I know I am a fool, demanding, and so worthless, love overflowing. This solitude protects me. 
I am only this whole here. Thank every moment that I ever tried to communicate in letter or line for all the stories that came my way, for the writers who raised me and the artists who showed me things could be beautiful even when grim. Mostly, thank every moment of bliss I managed to carve out while I was convinced I was ugly, fat, stupid, and beyond redemption to those closest to me. Thank forgiveness for rising up in moments like these to turn a poem into a celebration of this life that someone else talked to for a while through texts and didn't seem to mind. But even if they had, they, I would have been enough. These words would have saved my lonely heart. From the crown of my head to the bottoms of my feet, thank you for being such a tough, resilient, creative survival machine. It might be with duct tape and twine, but we are held together lovingly at long last. It is not an accident that this place we may lose is so full of art supplies and the necessary technology to make something, even when the body is nine-tenths overcooked potato quivering on the bed. Perhaps my dreams were too specific. I remember vividly going through the National Gallery of Art as a teenager thinking that with fervent desire, I wanted to create art that would save me or someone like me from the suffering I had been enduring that week to give the same solace that I was being given with a few hours of time in a gallery. While fairly vague as a dreaming teen, I never wanted to be the tortured, impoverished artist that I am today. But this is where I have been the happiest in my life. Likewise, I would get rid of the constant agony, absolutely, for this body has been through enough suffering. More every day, I struggle with the intense desire to smack people in the head for treating me like I do not know who I am or what I am experiencing. With all my heart, I hope I was a decent ecosystem, despite all the signs to the contrary. This has been an impressive run, all things considered. Words rarely failed me, even though I failed them every other minute. Oh, love, I hear you. We are weary and need to rest. The ecstasy of creating put aside, but... The dreaming will bridge the gap. Grateful and in love. Yours, AFEN 2022.